Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with a review for Basketball Wives LA Season 4 episode. I think it's 6. It will have been at the beginning of the video. I don't have anything with me that <laughs> I could tell you what it was. Anyway, you guys, the show is retarded. Review is going to be short. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys. So, just the whole show is just so juvenile. It's just juvenile, you guys. But, um, you know, I'm here to do a review. <laughs> It is my job for this here Monday, so that's what we're going to do. Single white female and Megan, they meet up to compare notes and talk about just how lunatical, I know it's not a word, but I just love saying it, <laughs> how much of a lunatic Jackie is. We already know that, right? A single white female also takes this time to kind of instigate, if I can use a word that's been used a million times on this show already, kind of pump up Megan and let her know that if that bitch spit on me, I would murder her face off. It's like, what? <laughs> Even though single white female had nothing but space and opportunity between her and Jackie last time they got together and she chose to walk away, which is fine. Nobody is saying that you need to fight, but I hate when people don't do the shit that they tell everybody else to do. That's all I'm saying. Jackie and Shawnee meets up because Shawnee just gets a hoot out of how crazy Jackie is. Okay, Jackie is just like, uh, I don't really know what's going on, but Megan has called me and told me that she wants to talk about what happened last time we were together in Santa Barbara and for me to bring my tennis shoes. Okay, bitch, I'm bringing my bat too, just in case a bitch want to get froggish. Shawnee was like, oh, maybe it's just to work out. Jackie was just like, Shawnee, I think you should come. Shawnee was just like, you know what, I'll be there because I loves me a good show, low key. So what is the big thing that she has planned for Jackie, you ask? Well, she has invited uh, Malaysia and Angel down to a sporting goods store because she has decided that she is going to engage Jackie in a rousing game of dodgeball. Dodgeball can be very dangerous. I can remember we used to play dodgeball um, when I was in junior high. Actually, the year that I think I was in the eighth grade, they ended up banning damn dodgeball at Paul Revere Junior High, which is where I went, because of the fact that, you know, somebody's head got smashed in the fucking wall between the Look, them boys used to be so fucking excited when it would rain. The girls hated it. The boys loved it because they knew we was going to be in a gym and we was going to be playing dodgeball, okay? And them motherfuckers was throwing them balls at fucking 100 miles an hour, <laughs> you know? I would, I would immediately just get hit so I could just get out of the way because it seemed like it's the further the fucking game goes on, you know, the more competitive the sport became. So, yeah, I, I ain't never here for no damn dodgeball. She tells um, Angel in Malaysia that, you know, we're going to play dodgeball. And that's kind of my way of getting back at Jackie. They're like, ooh, she is going to be mad. This is not going to go over well. And they're also a little hesitant about playing themselves, you know. And, and uh, Megan was just like, bitch, y'all can't fight. Fuck, you act like you ain't never got a ball thrown at you before. <laughs> You can tell they all come from different worlds, but whatever. The event comes up. Malaysia, single white female, Angel is there. Shawnee comes. That's when they tell Shawnee that, you know, it's going to be a game of uh, dodgeball. Shawnee was just like, ooh, Jackie has no idea what she's coming for. Jackie is ready. That bitch is coming. She got her hair pulled back in a ponytail. She got on her workout clothes or whatever. She got her tennis shoes on. She's smoothing Vaseline on her face and on her hands and everything. Okay, because she says that this is to keep the swelling down and the scratches away. I was like, bitch, it's to keep the damn punches from landing on your face. Jackie shows up. She makes it a point to make sure that they see that she has Vaseline in her purse. When she comes to join the group, they let her know that they are playing dodgeball. And Jackie is just like, oh, this is what the hell I didn't came out here for. Okay, she ain't really feeling it. But she was like, you know what? I'm going to play. I'm going to be a good sport. Now, everybody is there but Drea. Everybody knows what's going down. Eventually, Drea shows up. Once she realizes it's a game of dodgeball, she's just like, oh, hell no. Hell to the no. To the no, no, no. Hell no. <laughs> Drill's like, bitch, you ain't gonna be throwing no damn ball at me. And half of y'all bitches in here got a problem with me? Oh, no. Absolutely not. I will be leaving. So she she makes her exit. Everybody is just like, I don't know why Dre has an attitude. And I don't know why she's leaving out. And I don't know why she's making such a big deal. And yada, yada, yada. I'm thinking to myself, like, why don't you know this? Even if you felt like Jay should have just went on along and played the game and just to be part of the team, don't sit up here and act like you don't understand why the bitch don't want to be in there. Fuck, I don't want nobody throwing no 
no ball at me either. Okay, I'm not the most athletic person. So um, I have a hard time getting out of way of shit. Yeah, I, you know, I can think of better things to do than have a fucking ball come rushing at my face. Okay, so this is just another way for them to all kind of be like, oh, Dre is tripping. Dre will take her ass outside and she just waiting. Waiting around for somebody to come get her now. I was like, now, bitch, now you can take a stand if you want to and leave. But don't sit up there and think that somebody is supposed to run out after you. Fuck, that was your thing. We about to have us some fun playing dodgeball. So Megan, you know, she has a problem that Dre is not there, but whatever. The show must go on. So she passes out the t-shirts to everybody, okay? Malaysia is drama queen. Shani is the OG. Angel is new, new. And side note, that fucking Angel was in almost all the goddamn scenes. I said, bitch, that's the way you get your ticket on this show, right? I guess she was like, fuck, Dre can act up all she want, bitch. I needs me a job. This damn baby mama gig ain't working out like I thought it would. <laughs> shit so yeah she gets new new jackie gets wacky and um brandy gets single white female duh Dre's shirt would have been thotty hottie which is quite shadeful i wouldn't put no fucking t-shirt on that says thotty hottie even if it was just for a little kiki bitch you ain't fixing to play me like that not today uh, i guess one of the producers must have got an angel's ear and was like go on out there and see what's wrong with your girl so angel goes out there Dre's like i oh, fuck what took you so long shit been standing out here waiting for y'all to come running out after me. Yeah, I, I, I'm not playing that game, okay? If a ball hits me, then I'm fighting you. So it's just a better idea that I don't do this, okay? I didn't even know that this was going down. I was just like, hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Angel knew. Ain't that your best friend that tells you everything? Why the fuck Angel ain't, you know, put you up on game and let you know that, bitch, you about to walk into a damn dodgeball game. So I was just like, mm-hmm. Angel was just like, well, I think you should come in there and defend yourself. You know, they calling you thotty hottie and all of that. And Andrea was just like, yeah, no. I'm just, I'm leaving. The girls go back in and they actually have a good time. It was actually kind of refreshing this whole episode to see them do shit other than just meeting up at a damn bar and drinking and talking about somebody. So, you know, they get their aggressions out. They throwing the balls at each other. You had the rookies against the vets. They look like they had a nice time. Afterward, Megan and Jackie have their little conversation about the spit thing and Jackie surprisingly doesn't put up any fuss. She apologizes, says she doesn't have any excuse, she shouldn't have done it. That was cool of Jackie. But you know when a, uh, an apology comes from Jackie, you be looking around like what the fuck else is fixing to happen? So everybody is just sort of like, oh, well this is a strange turn of events. But whatever, Megan says that she's going to, you know, accept Jackie's apology, sort of, you know, that they're going to work on their friendship whatever they also talk about single white female and jackie and the confrontation that they had they kind of seem to bury the hatchet there too child i guess later on megan meets with the uh, shiny at the serving spoon um which is hey that was kind of one of my hangouts too although i'm more partial to roscoe they meet up at the serving spoon i guess it's just really to show that shiny really does like megan which means that megan has a spot on this show if the damn producer like you then you in okay so it's just more of the you know drea if she can't be in control then she feels defensive and she doesn't like the fact that everybody likes megan and megan doesn't like drea because she's fake or fuck whatever y'all now let's move on to a uh, single white female and uh, malaysia they go to a spray tanning place i was just like man what the fuck this is when you know your ass didn't win hollywood nigga you is black you're not even light-skinned black you about my color I and mean, you know we all like a good little golden tinge to us every now and fucking again but really you going to the spray tan place too much my girlfriend just texted me the other day and was just like you will not believe i saw malaysia at neiman's and she looked so fucking botoxed up her face was so tight you could tell that she's had all this fucking work done she had on some short short ass shorts some kind of gladiator sandals and her leg was too big so the shit wouldn't zip close her some tight shirt her titties out i was just like what is exactly going on with malaysia you can look at her and tell that she is going through some kind of changes i understand you know shit gets fucked up when you're in a divorce and you know you you just kind of be going through this semi midlife crisis or whatever but i was just like i hope she just don't overdo because malaysia was already naturally pretty like you don't need all this extra we can clearly look at malaysia and tell that she's had a lot of work done her boobs are bigger her ass is bigger everything that she wears is just skin tight and just a whole lot but if you spend your money on it i guess that's what you got to do but i just was like mm. this 
little visit to the damn spray tanner just confirmed it for me. I was just like, mm, yeah, these two have definitely gone a little Hollywood. But once the whole shenanigans of the spray tanning booth is all done, you know, single white female takes us time to let Malaysia know that, you know what, Drea is selfish, okay? Because even though you was going through your divorce, she didn't call you. She didn't even call me, and she knew I was having problems with my man, too. So, yeah, that bitch is, something ain't right with her, okay? She just selfish, and she all about herself, and this, that, and the other. And it's just like... You know, single white female is quite manipulative. Something about her makes me feel like she is trying to drive a wedge between Malaysia and Drea's friendship. You know how sometimes you have friends that really just want you to themselves? And she knows that Malaysia is in this weekend state for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the divorce or Malaysia is just childish like this. I mean, she never seemed to be before. So maybe Malaysia is just at a down moment in her life, quite vulnerable or whatever. And it seems like single white female just kind of takes it upon herself to always plant the seed that Drea is not your friend she's not your friend again another little fun thing in the show was the girls going to the hip-hop class everybody didn't go because I don't think Megan was there and I don't think Drea was there but uh you know Angel was there <laughs> like I said Angel was like bitch I got bills to pay they take the little hip-hop class seems to let off a little steam Again, it's good to see them not always just drinking and gossiping. On a different note, we see single white female and her son. You guys, I was just like, now I know I knew she had a kid, but I must have forgot that she had a kid. Because I was just like, when did she have this baby? Because, you know, it's been the whole talk about her not being able to have a kid. But then I was just like, oh, yeah, she did have a kid. But, yeah, I was just, the little boy had been shocked me because I had been put it in my mind that this child didn't have no kids. But, yeah, she got the one little boy. They talk on the phone on Skype with the daddy. And. Uh, you know sure her and her husband are having problems still so i thought the shit was funny when he was like oh it's about to be all-star week i ain't got shit to do i'm gonna come on down to the west coast and she was just like oh did you ask and he was like i'm a grown-ass man okay don't let these fucking cameras fool you i'm paying these damn bills how you gonna tell me i can't come to my own damn apartment i was cracking up because <laughs> i could just clearly remember when my my brother used to say like if him and his wife got into a fight or an argument he was just like i'm not not sleeping in my bed just because you mad at me shit you you mad at me you go fucking sleep on the couch you ain't fixing to put me out my own bed <laughs> that shit is funny to me so yeah uh brandy was trying to pull it like uh you know you gotta work for this and he was just like ah right, girl whatever i'll see you in a couple of weeks <laughs> Now, later on, Jackie and single white female meet up at the makeup store. They're trying to get the shit together for this damn Great Gatsby event that Jackie's planning. You know, the um, cancer foundation fundraiser thing. So, they're talking. Jackie takes this time to let, you know, single white female know that, you know, she apologizes again for what she did. That, you know, she's a beautiful woman. She should have never did. You know, this is the Jackie today. Jackie changes so fucking much. All you can do is take it with a grain of salt. Because tomorrow Jackie will be on something totally else new. Okay? But Jackie's feeling good. Okay? Medication is working right. So, she also tells her like, girl, I know you were saying that I had my fake shit, but look, I got my Chanel. I got my Rolex. I got my diamond rings. I got my receipts. I got everything. I was just like, it is really important to her to prove that she has the money. I just don't know why she keeps on harping on that. Did we think that Jackie was broke? I didn't think she was broke. Did you guys? Whatever. Malaysia gets on down there. They just looking at Jackie like she's a fucking fashion faux pas. Like she needs to get rid of this whole little black look. Quit cinching your damn t-shirts in the back. And somebody in my comments last week was saying that Jackie was not pretty. I thought, I, do we think Jackie is ugly? I don't think Jackie is ugly. People will confuse a person's personality with the way they actually look. I don't think Jackie is ugly. As a matter of fact, we can make Jackie very, very pretty. It wouldn't be hard at all. Jackie is just a middle-aged woman who is stuck in her late 20s as far as fashion is concerned. Don't have the body for it. And don't have the age for it. Like, the shit that she wears is too young. I think in her mind she has decided that it looks good, but it doesn't necessarily look good on her. But Jackie is not ugly by any means. I've seen some ugly bitches. But you know what I'm saying? It's like there's plenty of other people that are I would consider unattractive. Jackie is not one of them. The bitch is just crazy. Just crazy. That's it. So they give her a few pointers. I guess Jackie is going to take heed. We'll see. But the last scene of the show, you guys, was where I was just like, this show is just so fucking confusing and, and just tiresome and childish and all of that. Single white female Malaysia and Drea meet up. And Drea's just like, you know, I haven't really been truthful with you guys. I don't like Megan. 
which everybody already knows. But you guys don't know that I have a problem with you guys liking her. Now, this is where I had a problem. Like, I just don't understand this. You can be friends with whoever. I don't have to like them. You're still my friend. If I'm close enough to you as a friend, I trust that I can trust you to not put my shit out there with the other motherfucker. And maybe that's what the problem is here. Maybe they really aren't for real, real friends. So, Drea doesn't trust the fact that Megan, I mean, Malaysia and single white female are friends friends with Megan. Maybe that's what the issue is because otherwise it's just stupid. They're mad at Drea because, you know, she's not giving Megan a chance. You know, they're telling her that, you know, she was friends with Jackie and Jackie did all this shit and they weren't no, they didn't have no problems with Drea and Jackie's friendship, which is true. So why can't they be friends with Megan and why do you have this problem? But then it was also bothering me that they didn't really try to understand at all why ja Drea has a problem with Megan. Megan definitely does have a problem with Drea. We know it. You guys know it. So that's why I'm just like, what is going on here? It's just like, the whole thing is crazy. Okay, then single white female, you know, she takes her stand, calls her selfish, says that she's not trying to be there for him, you know. And Malaysia is just sitting there kind of soaking it up and listening. I, like I said, it's sort of like a backdoor effort to kind of sabotage Drea and Malaysia's friendship. But not doing it so overtly that Malaysia feels like Drea is, is getting attacked by a single white female. And then instead it's just, you know, single white female is just trying to tell Drea about herself. But of course Malaysia starts to chime in like, you're not here for anybody. You know, you don't do anything other than for yourself. I was just like... <sighs> So, Drea is upset that they're friends, and she don't want them to be friends with Megan, and, you know, then single white female Malaysia is mad that she's not friends with Megan, and, you know, this whole thing with, I was just like, I'm just, I was, yeah. This show is just silly, y'all. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's it. Let me get off of here. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rock Stars. Bye.